Let's next talk about spinal nerves. So here we have a cross section through uh, thoracic vertebra with an associated spinal cord and spinal nerve levels. And so with to understand spinal nerves, there's a couple of things we need to know. Roots, spinal nerve trunk, and then the rami. So to understand them, let's take a look at this tree. And we look at this tree, what do we notice? Well, there's roots, and there's a tree trunk, and there's branches in the tree. That's everything we need to know about spinal nerves, except we just turn it on its side like this. So there's the roots and the trunks and the branches, and then we go shing, and we stick it up in the right corner, and what do we see? Roots, trunks, me, roots, trunk, and branches. So when we look down, we see roots, spinal nerve trunk, and rami. And the term ramus, or rami for plural, means branches. Roots lead into a trunk, lead into branches, just like a tree. And so there we have the root, spinal nerve trunk, and the rami. So first, let's take a look at the roots. There are millions of neurons bringing sensory information to the spinal cord. And there are millions of motor neurons coursing from the spinal cord to all the muscles and the organs. So it begs the question, how do these neurons not get tied in a knot? So let's do as an analogy for a minute. Dublin City Center. I lived in Dublin for a couple of years. I love it. That's actually really creepy. That's better. Okay, there's a cute little... Uh, Leprechaun. So let's talk about Dublin City Center for a minute. So here we have a picture of Ireland. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in to Dublin, the capital of Ireland, a little bit more. And Dublin's a really, really old city. So they've got people that goes back millennia. So when they first had this city and you look at the city center, they didn't build roads for like big lorries, really big trucks. So as we start zooming in more and more on Dublin and get more and more, you see all those orange lines, those are major roads getting close, as you can see, approaching Dublin. You see, we're getting closer to city center, and we're getting closer to city center. You see the Dublin. As we zoom in, I want you to notice something. We're zooming in now close to Dublin. Look at that. We now have, once we're downtown, one-way streets. Because of how busy it gets in the smaller roads, to help ensure that traffic moves smoothly, the closer we are to the city center, where all the hub of uh, activity occurs, we have one-way streets. One-way streets, spinal roots, are like one-way street signs, where here we've got city center, Dublin city center, and then we have one-way streets to help ensure that as we get close to the hub activity, the Dublin city center, things stay organized. So Dublin city center is our spinal cord. That's where the hub of activity, that's where all information at that segmental level is coming in, where the processing occurs, and then all that motor activity comes out. So our one-way streets are the roots. One route goes in, the dorsal route, and one route goes out, the motor route. One-way streets. And once we get away from the city center, we get two-way streets. So the ventral route. So here we've got the ventral route there. And the ventral root is housing all motor neurons. And so there is a, a somatic motor neuron in the ventral horn, and it sends its axon out and going towards the periphery. One street. So the ventral root only has motor neurons that are taking efferent information away from the spinal cord. Now the dorsal root is here. And that dorsal root is only going in one direction, to the spinal cord. So there we have the cell body and that dorsal root ganglion, and the information, as the arrow shows, is coming in to that dorsal horn gray matter, only one direction. So we have, the way to remember this is the abbreviation DAVE, where the dorsal root is bringing afferent information in, and the ventral root is taking efferent information out. Just remember DAVE. So uh, let's take a look now at the uh, spinal nerve trunk. And there we have that spinal nerve trunk. And the spinal nerve trunk is what joins the roots and the rami. This is a two-way street. So now we have both sensory and motor information collectively. Two-way street. So let's take a look at this ventral ramus. Here is the ventral ramus. And that ventral ramus is going to the body wall and limbs and coming from the body wall in limbs, both taking motor and sensory information. Uh, the ventral rami is what we'll pretty much focus with regards to those rami as we go throughout the course, with the exception of week one when we're really focusing on the back. So there we have a ventral ramus associated with that one spinal cord level. But take a look all along segmentally from cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral regions down to the coccygeal. Each of those lines represents a ventral ramus. And often these ventral rami form a plexus in the neck called the cervical plexus. 
uh, that goes to the uh, body wall muscles of the neck or our brachial plexus that just goes to the muscles and the skin of our upper limb. And then we have our intercostal nerves that are just coursing within the between uh, below the ribs going to intercostal muscles and the skin overlying the ribs. And then we have our lumbar plexus that does part of the body wall and part of the lower limb and our sacral plexus that's really going to lower limb. And so these plexuses of ventral rami are coursing to different elements of the body. All right, now the dorsal ramus here is what's going to the skin of the back and to the deep back muscles. And it's a one-way street. So it goes to deep back muscles or the erector spinae and transversal spinalis muscles, also known as the paraspinal muscles or the intrinsic back muscles or the true deep back muscles. <gasps> I'm losing my breath. They're all called so many stif similar things. But those deep back muscles, erector spinae, transversal spinalis, and so forth. In addition, it also goes to the skin of the back to the mid-scapular line.